बेस्ट एल्बम ऑफ द ईयर Hi guys. So I watched Kantara for the second time on Tuesday and I have a few observations. This video will be mainly about discussing the songs of this film, but let me just get those little observations out of the way first. There were an insane amount of jokes and absolutely hilarious banters between the friend circle of Rishab Shetty's character that I had missed the first time I watched it. I did catch a lot of them but I missed quite a few as well. Well mainly because I was distracted by the cinematography, blown away by the topic of the film and kind of in a stoned mind space because of the way the movie had begun. And the other thing I observed is that the Hindi versions of the songs do not do justice to the compositions, the core tune of those songs. Look, when I saw the film for the first time, I heard the songs for the first time and I really liked them. The compositions seemed interesting, the arrangements were really really great and groovy, great instrument choices etc. But the problem is, ever since I got back home, I have been listening to the Kantara album on loop on Spotify. As a result, now I have a reference point, which is the Kannada version of the songs. Believe me, if you are a non-Kannada audience and you have not been listening to the Kannada versions of the songs separately at home, you are making a huge mistake. You deserve it. Your ears deserve it. You could argue that lyrics are important to you and so you won't have fun listening to a song without understanding the lyrics. Fair enough. I come from a background of being a metal guitarist. For those of you do- who don't know, uh, metal is a music genre where the music is very aggressive and the lyrics don't matter much because you can't hear them since the vocals are always distorted deliberately. So anyway, my mind always prioritizes melody and arrangement and the groove and the mix quality over the lyrics. You are lucky if your mind works like mine. Because let me inform you. Till date I haven't heard one single Ar Rahman or MM Kiravani song in its Hindi version which is better than its original Tamil or Telugu version. Although actually there is one exception for both composers. Ar Rahman's Avada Bhavde the Hindi version is really better than its Tamil version Minsara Kanavu and MM Kiravani's song Tu Mile Dil Khile is really better than its Telugu version uh, Telu Sa Manasa. Now why do these differences happen just because of the language? It's obvious isn't isn't it? the composer creates the tune based on a poem sent by the lyricist or creates a tune based on the mood of the song or song situation briefed to him by the director and the local lyricist of that language writes the lyrics based on that melody okay fine up till here then the problem arises when a lyricist of a different language has to do the lyrics for the song he not only has to translate and transliterate the lyrics he has to construct the sentences in the same length as the original lyrics use about the same number of words and one which is as similar as possible to the lyrical rhythm and pronunciations of the original lyrics anyone who knows more than two languages fluently will know how tough that is and so what happens is the composer has to end up making small to significant changes in the melody for the new lyrics depending on how well the translation has been done so rest assured you are totally missing out the melody actually intended by the composer if you are not listening to any song in its original language Now it's important to mention Bahubali in this context because Bahubali's songs its Hindi versions are almost almost as good as its Telugu versions for that I'll have to give the credit to the absolute genius Manoj Muntashir obviously now I don't know who did the Hindi lyrics for Kantara but whoever it was maybe because of tight deadlines or that incredibly small budget of 16 crores could not do a very good job and as a result there are gigantic melody differences between the Hindi and Kannada versions but to be fair to the hindi lyricist i have a hunch that it might be because of the kannada language itself because the only other kannada movie i've seen in my life is kgf and even there i didn't like the hindi songs that much i think kannada might be a tougher language to be translated into hindi using same word count than some other bharati languages now let me make one thing clear why am i not discussing the background score of Kan- kantara specifically in this video Firstly because even though I really really like the background score I don't think it's the best in the year that spot is reserved for RRR I'll discuss my thoughts on that soundtrack RRR soundtrack on some other day but in short I like the songs of Kantara more than RRR's but I like RRR's background score more than Kantara and the second reason is 
the background score album hasn't released on any audio platform yet so i haven't been able to go back and listen listen to them over and over but i will say this kantara's background score did its job very very effectively and that melody has already uh, stuck in my mind a a a a o o o o that that melody and i remember there was one other absolutely dark come painful melody that came uh, kept cam- coming back i really hope that album releases uh, asap although the background score for the climax which is the authentic music for their cola that that hits you really hard and uh, now let me discuss the songs separately firstly singara sirie the song kicks off with a bass line that seems very strange at first and right there i'm guaranteeing you 99% of bollywood and the bengali tollywood industries directors and producers would have rejected this idea or rejected the entire song because of that particular bass line idea but why is ajnish loknath the composer and his team of music programmers doing this doing that particular bass line in the beginning that's a mystery that we get informed about later in the song the bollywood and our tollywood directors that is bengali tollywood directors and bollywood directors would have said that that bass bass line doesn't go with the mood of the song doesn't go with the rhythm of the song all of them are pure geniuses and because of their high level of intelligence and lack of courage they'll never make these bold and truly creative choices that give birth to some new ideas their boldness starts with nudity and ends with hindu phobia anyway screw them so now let me do something absolutely crazy i have to take out my piano and sing a little portion of the song otherwise i won't be able to help you all understand the awesomeness behind this arrangement and please note that i am a music programmer by profession and cannot sing i cannot sing and i cannot speak one word of kannada but i will today do both of those things <laughs> okay firstly uh, let's try this singar sirie angali nale bangar agba mai gandhari ante kanmuchi hongana sarasu chhaye mandhasa aha nalu me a shravan masa mudad maya ange manad sarange mudad madharange nanna hakire mungudud soke dare 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 now one major thing i want you to listen to in this chorus section is that see this melody mudda da maya ange so this line has essentially the same melody repeated three times in different lyrics mudda da maya da 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 but each time the melody is treated differently with three different chords and all three in different moods so see the difference here da 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 all sweet and happy da 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 sad and depressing and breaks your heart da 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 raises your hopes and then da 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 and then breaks your hopes again that's the diversity of and the ranges of emotions that the composer plays with this is a jo- job of a good composer or maybe the composer has uh, arranged it himself i don't know but this is what good arrangement is all about and let me guarantee you that uh, any any bollywood composer or bengal tollywood composer would have rejected this particular chord that they would say this doesn't go with the uh, song's mood this is too horrifying this is too sad i want it to be a romantic sweet song what they would prefer you to do is that uh, bo- in bollywood and bengal tollywood they would ask you repeat the chords that da 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 i wonder if they would ac- accept this chord but they would not let you do da and 
the composer doesn't want you to understand these things consciously he's doing these things deliberately with his own knowledge and interpretation so that you find this song different and interesting than all other songs then the antara starts and that's where that crazy bass line which was the intro comes back the mystery that uh, ajneesh loknath created is uh, answered here in the antara uh, that bass line which started in the antara they introduced it so that you feel like a recall value uh, comes to you when you hear the antara that oh yeah i heard this in the intro that's the funny uh, interesting journey the composer is taking you on now coming to my favorite melody line of the song which is the best female vocal line i've heard in the last 4 years that is after the male part ends now here also the composer does something very interesting he doesn't hit the last chord of the first line okay the chords are da 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 the chord doesn't hit here if you notice in the song only the bass guitar falls no other instrument is there no chord establishment he leaves you hanging he leaves you high and dry he leaves you wanting more in the next line he gives you the chord da 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 singara seriye da 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 okay i sang a kannada song now i'm getting back to the vocals i mean the song analysis please take note of how beautiful the groove of this of the and the beat of this song is such beautiful percussion arrangement this song has okay now here's a fun fact i am a huge vijay prakash fan especially because of uh, uh, specifically two of his performances one is his live performance with the berkeley india ensemble and his, their live performance of the song manmohini you should check it out on youtube and his work in rrr where he does that absolutely crazy intro the the movie begins with his vocals dare da nisane sa nisane sa nisane sa and he does one more octave lower than the voice my voice doesn't go there and then the that classic voice which will now be remembered in history is the start of the climax where ram comes in and that's his voice ramam ranadhiram that's vijay prakash's voice but the point is i did realize i didn't realize this song was by sung by vijay prakash until i came home and checked the credits that's his versatility see versatility of a singer is not just in the kinds of song uh, songs he does but also in the kind of textures he can come up with in different songs for example can you relate kishor kumar's soft timid voice in wo sham with the completely different and aggressive voice in khai ke pan banaras wala no <laughs> they are 180 degrees different and that's exactly what vijay prakash has achieved in this song he sounds like a 25 year old kid kid in this song and let me just give you a sort of a verdict if we are judging only by the tune the core composition not the arrangement not the mixing not the mixing style not the vocals not the genre melody wise i think singara seria is the best song we have had in india in the last 10 years that doesn't mean that the singers didn't singers of the song didn't do a job a uh, good job i'm not discounting the fact that the arrangement did contribute to how much i like the composition itself but for those categories i could come up with some better examples spoiler alert most of my examples are from bahubali and udi the surgical strike but <laughs> but just melody wise singara seria has taken us back to that era when indian film music was dependent solely on the level of the core tune and the melody of the vocals in a song now before going on to discuss the next songs let me digress a little and get into the issue of south indian cinema and music reclaiming indian culture in every way possible and how they unknowingly have a decolonial way of looking at things listen guys what melody is supposed to be romantic what melody is horror and what melody is funny all these are randomly conjured up and constructed ideas okay these things depend on what you are used to seeing in front of you in movies in movies after movies for years 
Now, the problem we are facing is, ever since 1991 and the ushering in of Western media, plus the gradual influx of less classically trained uh, educated and educated uh, classically educated musicians getting into the industry just because of their people skills the, this has led to two major things one is memorable and timeless melodies have stopped happening because a lot of modern bollywood and bengal tollywood composers have the skill set to just play four chords and sing a melody like a nursery rhyme on acoustic guitar and impress some girls in in a college that's their skill set skill level and i pretty much fall in that category because I also have almost zero training in Indian classical music. But then, luckily, I am not a composer. I am just a fan of different kinds of music and I like to replicate those sounds for the tunes provided to me by the main composer, which I just arrange. The second problem we are facing today is, we have self-handicapped our industry by buying into what Hollywood and mainly the composer John Williams decided is horror or romantic or funny. Remember I spoke of how Bollywood uses traditionally Carnatic uh, classical music for comedy scenes in my review of Kantara. That idea obviously didn't come from John Williams, who is the background score composer for the movies like Harry Potter movies, Jurassic Park, Star Wars, Jaws, you name it. So a lot of 90s kids and mid 80s kids have been really influenced by his interpretations of what melody suits what mood. Now let me give you just one example of how that handicaps us. You already heard the chorus of Singara Sirie, whose chord structure would be rejected by Bollywood and Bengal Tollywood's producers because it's not sweet or romantic enough, right? Now listen to this melody. Now sounds horror, right? Now see where the great Sachindev Burman use this so-called horror melody. Can you believe that? He, Sachindev Burman, uses a melody which is by today's standards a horror melody for a song which has Rajesh Khanna and Sharmila Tagore dancing around in, in the snow. So, there are some issues our composers really need to sort out. And our directors and producers really need to grow some balls. Otherwise, these sorts of different variety of melodies won't happen because you are you are compartmentalizing yourself too much. That okay, this is horror. You want a horror scene? Okay, I'll get. I'll do this. You want a sweet music? I'll do this. <laughs> that's that, that's the way industry works these days. Anyways, uh, back to Kantara. The next song in the album is a song called the Rebel Song, which is a very fun song fits really well with the picturization and the melody is rooted in the local folk of Karnataka but with interesting western influences in its beat and the groove and also not the groove in the beat and the arrangement uh, the way it has been sung the way the vocals have been mixed it just feels so local and rooted and and, and authentic the next song is called the karma song and oh my god that melody and the scenes that we see when this song comes into the movie. It leaves me speechless every time I hear it even at home. Also remember, this is the only song in the movie whose Hindi version's melody did not get uh, affected too drastically uh, because of the translation. So even non-Kannada audiences have been lucky enough to experience the awesomeness of this particular song's melody in the cinema hall itself. The very suspicion build up and impending storm kind of a vibe that song's groove gives us while being kind of a tad bit aggressive with that which goes on incredibly well uh, which goes incredibly well with the movie and the entire melody of the composition is probably as good as singara siria if not better these two are my choices of the best compositions of the decade in world cinema the hauntingly passionate vocals of ajnish loknath and venkatesh dc gives me goosebumps just talking about it. And I think one major reason I like this song is, I cannot figure out the gender of the singer here. It might be a thick voiced woman or a soft shrill voiced man. I love that. This makes this song more universal and versatile in applicability. And finally, the vocal interlude of hey, ah, hey, oh, hey, ah. what, what melodies? I think the only other example of such vocal instrumentation getting stuck in my mind are the vocal pieces in the background scores of Bahubali 1 and 2. And this song also, 
this karma song also has some mind blowing bass guitar work i'm 70% sure it's played on an actual bass guitar by a person not not programmed on a midi keyboard man whoever played the bass really took the song to the level it deserved took the song to a whole other level it wouldn't be possible without that kind of bass playing do not listen to these songs on your mobile or laptop's loudspeaker guys you need headphones to hear that bass and then there comes varaha rupam the best heavy metal song in the history of indian cinema i already spoke about it in detail in my review of kantara so won't go into too much detail here but oh the guitar riff the guitar tone the drumming the creativity of the drumming all that is very very skillful and just feels right with that scene and so brave and so courageous doing a heavy metal song for a traditional religious uh, da- dance performance and and a deity coming in coming in in the human world that that's so courageous and lastly the traditional the authentic the rooted folk songs with two different versions called va polluya the melody is very broad can suit different moods and is very fun but the main thing i like about va polluya is the arrangement it's so original and it's so acoustic percussion driven and so well recorded in some really great studio by a really good recording engineer and mixed by a very very good mix engineer it gives me the vibe of listening to a live folk performance in front of me and satisfies my ears immensely because see every now and then you need to hear and feel real things and not just through the digital medium this song gives you that kind of a vibe so in conclusion i hope the composer the arrangers and the sound engineers involved in this album really do well in their lives uh, financially and with awards and popularity and i hope people realize this is the best film film uh, song album of the year jaya jaya he mahishasura mardini ramya ka pardini jai